Alrighty, what's going on boys and girls? So this particular video we're going to be talking about how to successively switch from Windows to Linux. Now it's kind of a multi-prong kind of deal. First up is mindset. You have to have a mindset that this is going to be different. If you come into it expecting X and Y to work from your prior OS, you are doomed to fail. And what do I mean by that? Oh, well, I expect Adobe products to work. Yeah, you're doomed to fail. Not only because you don't understand that while those don't work, that there's going to be a time investment that you're going to have to make into alternative tools. And if you don't factor that in into the switch, that's a problem. So you're doomed to fail from the start. So because you didn't approach it with an open mind, understanding that different platform is going to have different tools. You know, and there's certain Android apps aren't going to work on iOS. I know certain most iOS apps aren't going to work on Android. Uh, you know, I, I don't expect iMovie on Windows. Or I, I don't expect certain Windows things on Mac. So why expect certain things to work on Linux? So keep an open mind and understand that alternatives, while not substitutes, and keep an awesome mind that while those are not subs, uh, like alternative does not mean a drop in replacement when I say substitutes. Um, that because drop in replacement refers to that it's just drop it in and you can keep going that there's no learning curve there's no time investment and that's a fallacy in that argument and that i hate that people make have a willingness to understand it's different so an open mind and a willingness that there may be time that you have to put into it to understand that it's going to be different that things operate differently, that you're not going to understand how X or Y works because this is how it used to work on X prior platform. If that's the lens that you're going to gauge a switch or move to anything in life, that is total fallacy in your thinking and approach to it because you're doomed to fail based on the simple fact that you're comparing it to prior experiences. You don't go from one job at one company, while you might go, it might have a similar job at another company, that other company is gonna have different ways of doing stuff than the prior one you worked for. It's that that's reality. And people don't take a realistic approach when it comes to making these big switches, especially in technology. And Sometimes we as Linux users and people who s sell Linux to people, they end up overinflating the, the, the ease of use in the way, oh, you can just, it's a drop in replacement. For some people, it can be. Some people, they literally just need a web browser and a place to click and install apps. And that's all they need. For some, others, not so much. Others have specific tools. Others have specific use case. They might not need those specific tools. You know, if example, if you need Premiere or you use Premiere, but it's not necessary, you can potentially switch to Resolve or you can switch to Lightworks or you can switch to whatever open source alternative you want. And that's the thing. Those alternatives you have to understand are going to take time. And I can't stress that enough. Uh, another thing to be successful with your switch is going to be a lot of understanding that use the software that is going to be available on the other platform prior to your switch. So what I mean by that is if you're going from Windows to Linux, insert any distro it doesn't matter i'm being distro agnostic here uh understand that certain applications are available on the other platform understand that firefox 
Opera, Chrome, you know, insert browser here is going, you know, even Edge if you want to go that route. It's available on Linux. Use it on the prior platform before your Switch because at the end of the day, it will make the underlying OS matter that much less. If you're a video editor and you just do, you know, if YouTube videos and that, like you have a certain level of production that you only need. Use Resolve, use Lightworks, use, uh, you know, Caden Live, Shotcut. Um, I'm not sure if Flowblade, I know Cinelaire doesn't work, but you get the idea. Use that on Windows before the switch. Because therefore, you have the safety net of Windows that you're currently on, but you also have the pull-in of the new applications that you're going to be potentially using on the other platform. And once you learn those applications and you move it over to the other platform, besides like the package management stuff and kind of, you know, different UI experience, the applications themselves don't change really. And that is the biggest thing because you need the applications more than you need the underlying OS. The underlying OS is important to make those applications run, but really it's more agnostic and then people want to make it the other way to successfully switch from windows to linux find the right solution if you are not a pen tester don't go try installing you know art strike or cali or that kind of stuff Go and if you're a generic end user, go install Linux Mint, go install Pop! OS, go install Ubuntu, go install Manjaro or, you know, insert distro here that it focuses solely on that. It makes a very big difference because what people don't understand and the, what the Linux community doesn't want to always mention is that these different distros that we just view as different flavors at their core, they share the Linux kernel, but what version of the kernel? It could be an LTS kernel. It could be another kernel. It could be a different version of uh, GCC. It could be 9,000 other things that make it different. These are different OSs that happen to be based on Linux or on the Linux kernel. That's the, di that's the similarity. So treat all the distros as different OSs and you will understand that and you apply the lens of okay this distro is going to be like switching from a from windows to a mac or mac to windows what i mean by that is that the the mind frame and understanding that these are going to be different um elementary os very different from say solace similar approaches on certain things uh, you know, Curie uh, with like App Center and that kind of stuff. Uh, but Solus is a curated. Uh, curated. Uh, they have a, their own custom DE with uh, Budgie. But the way they go about doing certain things is very different than uh, elementary. Elementary wants to be more open, uh, but they have a very user experience driven philosophy for the desktop which is Pantheon and all the, uh, and the way that you interact with it. Totally fine. But understand the, the limitations. And that, that's where the failure of a lot of people happens, is not approaching it, and it's not being, quote-unquote, sold the right way to these people that, that we make these recommendations to. And this dirty little advice that, especially a lot of the diehards, the the... The Libre software only ride or die people will never tell you it's okay if it doesn't work for you. Because what these at the end of the day for some people are just tools to get a job done. And I can't blame someone if that's all they have in the lens they view technology through. Because they, it shows that their importance 
for what they need is not the same importance as what you are viewing it as. So mind frame, willingness to invest time and a healthy under, uh, So open mind, time frame, as far as giving yourself time for the OS and learning that it's different and just understanding that it's okay if it doesn't work for you.